Does anybody know who this guy is? Anyone? Nobody? I'm hearing? Okay, call it out, call it out. What, what about this guy? Next? This next guy? Okay, okay, we're getting to the 90s. Next one? Okay, if you didn't know by now, you should get it by this point. Who is this? Call it all out. Call it out. James Bond 007. So what does James Bond do for a living? Like, what, how does he bring home the bacon? He's a spy. He uh, does espionage, corporate and otherworldly. He is a secret agent. He is a secret agent, specifically an agent. So what does an agent do? Not just like a spy here, but like an agent in general. An agent is someone who is sent into the world. He's sent into a a specific situation. He is strategically placed by a higher authority in order to enact change, to make a change in the world, to bring about a better world. So James Bond, he 007, he is a secret agent. He is sent by the British Secret Service, MI6, if you've not seen the movies. And he is strategically placed in situations to enact change. He overthrows terrorist organizations. He takes out terrorists. He does, he takes out corrupt business leaders. He does all these sorts of things in order to bring about a better world for all of us or everyone in his fictional universe. So similarly, we as Christians are called to be agents. We are called to be agents of God. Maybe we're not going to, you know, do um, worldwide espionage and take down a terrorist or whatever, but the Lord strategically places every single one of us into unique situations, unique places around the world, throughout Auburn, whatever, in order to enact change, to make changes, to make the world a better place, to bring God's kingdom to earth. That is your job. You are all agents. Say, I am an agent. I am an agent. Yes. And that's what Jesus has been really talking about as we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount, as we've been going through all these Beatitudes, as Pastor Garen has been talking about them, we are called as children of God to bring God's kingdom, bring the kingdom of heaven down to earth. This was never supposed to be, church was never supposed to be like this pocket universe. It was never supposed to be this thing we go to on Sundays and then, you know, we worship, we hear a good message, hopefully, and then we go out into the world And it's just like business as usual, right? That's never what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to take what we learn on Sundays, take God's word that we hear in the Bible, we read on our own, etc. And we are supposed to explode into the world to enact change, to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven to earth. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we've got to be doing. And so today we're going to be looking at the two last Beatitudes. And we're going to be seeing how we, as agents of God, can bring heaven to earth. So I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew 5, verse 9. Matthew 5, verse 9. If you have the same Bible as me, it's page 736, but it's not a pew Bible, so I don't know if you do have the same Bible as me. Just teasing. Verse 9, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Now, as I was reading this passage this week, I was just struck by one of the words in here, and that word is work. Those who work for peace. In other translations, it says, blessed are those who are peacemakers. Blessed are those who make peace. And I was struck by just the action of that word, because I think Jesus is very intentional when he spoke these words. He's not saying God blesses those of you who are at peace. God blesses the, God doesn't bless you those of you who are peaceful. 
Those are blessings in and of themselves, of course. But what Jesus is saying here is God blesses those of you who are peacemakers. Those of you who work for peace. There is a call to action here. There is movement. There is purpose. There is a pursuit of peace in this world. It is like a runner running toward the finish line. Right? Bless those who work for peace. So we as God's children, just like James Bond is called to be an agent, a secret agent for MI6, the British Secret Service, we are called to be agents of peace. Because remember, when James Bond goes out into the field, I hope you know James Bond isn't a bad guy. James Bond is a good guy. <laughs> he takes down terrorist organizations. He like takes down gangsters. He does all this stuff. There's a lot of taking down. But it's all, to, it's all in the name of peace. Yeah. He's trying to bring order to the world. He's trying to take out the baddies so we can have peace at night, peace and quiet at night. In the same way, we are to be agents of peace. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be an agent of peace? Does that mean that we avoid conflict? Does that mean that we avoid fighting, avoid offending anyone? No. I don't think so. Peace is not conflict repressed. Peace is conflict addressed. Peace is not looking at something that's wrong and saying, well, I'm just going to sweep that under the carpet. I'm just going to pretend I didn't see that because I don't want to make waves. That's not true peace. True peace is taking is when two things are at odds. You know, there's tension. There's always going to be tension in this world. But true peace is taking two opposing sides, finding where they're fighting, finding the root problem, what is actually making them fight, what is actually causing the tension, and addressing the problem. Not avoiding it, addressing it. It's reconciliation. Some of you really, like in your heart, deeply believe that you are peacemakers because you avoid problems, because you don't want to make waves, because when you're, you're in a relationship with your spouse or you're in a relationship with your coworkers or you're in a relationship with your own sin where you just want to look the other way, even if that person is harming you, even if sin is so available to you all the time, if you just ign- try to ignore it, and look, try and look the other way, sweep it under the carpet, you are not truly at peace. That is not peacemaking. That is peace faking. It's just sweeping it under the carpet. And really, as I was thinking about this this week, what if God took that approach to our lives? What if God took that approach to our sin? Remember, Genesis, Genesis 2, Genesis 3. Mankind sinned against God, severing the relationship between God and man. We used to walk with God in the garden. Can you imagine that? We had this beautiful, perfect relationship with God. And because of our sin, it was broken. We no longer had that deep personal relationship with God. So what did God do when that happened? Did he just say, well, you know, humanity is kind of sinful now. I guess I'll just like ignore that. Like, like, no, he didn't. He addressed the problem. He said, what can I do? There is a problem here. There is a tension. We are not at peace. What can I do to fix this? And what did he do? What's the answer you say in Sunday school? Jesus, he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus, the only living and perfect sacrifice who could pay for all of our sin. The root problem that separated us from God was our sin. And so so God sent his only son to die a horrible death on the cross to address the root problem, to bring us back to peace, to bring us back to a place where we have peace with God. That's what Romans 5 says. Because of what Jesus has done, we now have peace with God. Isn't that amazing? 
God addressed, he addressed the root issue and brought us back to true, lasting, forever peace that cannot be broken by us again unless you turn away. Right? Oh man, our God is a peacemaker, right? He is a peacemaker. And so should we be. We should be peacemakers. Now you might say to me, but they started it. <laughs> They're the cause. I didn't do nothing wrong. <laughs> Why should I have to make peace with someone who has so harmed me, so hurt me for no good reason? In a perfect world, they would come to you first. In a perfect world, those who have sinned against us would take the first step in reconciliation, in making peace. But guess what? <laughs> we are not in a perfect world. <laughs> and there will be times in your life where you need to make the first step of peacemaking, the first step of reconciliation, even when you are the innocent party. Right? Because that's what Jesus did for us. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. God didn't do anything wrong. There was, you cannot fault God in any way for humanity's sin whatsoever. We sinned against him, but who took the first step? God did. And that is our pattern to follow. So I encourage you, as you go out into this week, make peace. Make peace with others. Be a peacemaker. Be a worker for peace. Take steps. Take the first step in reconciliation. Romans 12, 18 says, As far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If you have a choice to make, if you have a step to make, if you have some path in life where you could do something, make an action to possibly be at peace with someone, you need to take it. You are not following God's will if you are just ignoring that path, if you are not trying to bring reconciliation. Now, as I'm saying this, I, I had a thought, and I don't want you to do this. When you're reconciling with people, when you're making peace with people, and you have done nothing wrong, the Lord does not call you to admit guilt. The Lord does not call you to say, I am sorry for what I did to you. That's just enabling like emotional abuse. We need to address the real problem. And that involves alerting people, showing them how they have sinned against you in a kind and loving way. It does not mean when you know someone has wronged you, you go up to them and say, I'm so sorry for that whole situation. It was my fault. Jesus never said that. Jesus never said, hey, I'm sorry for this whole sin thing. Yeah, my bad. No, it wasn't his fault. It was our fault. Don't admit guilt. Because that's just, that's it. When you have, if you've done something wrong, you could admit guilt. <laughs> but, but if you have not, don't, ena don't enable abusive behavior. It's not in my notes, but it's just something I thought I should share with you guys. <laughs> So the passage continues and it says, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called children of God. Children of God, this is our blessing. And there's this pattern in scripture. Really, it's a pattern throughout history, throughout life, where children will follow in the footsteps of their father or their parent. And so Peter, Peter's father, he was a fisherman. What did Peter do? He was a fisherman. Yeah, he was a fisherman. Jesus' father was a carpenter. What did he do? He was a carpenter. Jesus' you know, real father was God, and so Jesus picked up that family business as well. Um, our father is a peacemaker. So if we are to be called children of God, to correctly wear the mantle, child of God, that means we have to take on everything our Father does, and that includes making peace with others. And if you do, if you are a peacemaker, if you are working, if you are pursuing peace, he will bestow upon you that title, child of God. You will be worthy of that title, child of God. Isn't that good news? Amen.
So when you go out into the, I say real world, when you go out into the real world, make peace with others. Seek reconciliation. Address problems. Address sin in a kind way. Find solutions and ask God for help. Because I promise you, the Lord looks well upon you. If you are seeking reconciliation and you ask for his help, God, will you just help me find peace with my brother, with my sister? Oh man, he's going to help you. He loves that. This is the Lord's heart. This motivated his entire ministry on earth, his entire ministry with humans since the beginning of time was reconciliation. He loves it. If you do that, you will be fulfilling your role as a child of God. Now we're not done yet. <laughs> Chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. So verse 10. Jesus continues his Sermon on the Mount, his Beatitudes, and says, God blesses those who are persecuted. Yikes. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And then he continues, he elaborates and says, God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. How real is that to us today? Yeah. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the exact same way. So I want to draw your attention to something in this, in this particular beatitude. And that is its length. Like, how long is this? Every other beatitude was a verse. So Matthew, the, the, the author of this gospel, he dedicated one verse to each of Jesus' teachings on blessed, is, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those, blessed are the merciful, etc., he gave this one three. And the last two are long. So 30% of Jesus' Beatitudes are on persecution. Persecution for doing the right thing. What does that tell you about its importance to us? About its relevance to us, even today? Very important. Very relevant. And I'm sorry to be a bit of a downer to you, for you guys, but America for the past like 100 or so years, we've been living in pretty, a pretty coddled life as Christians. It is a rarity for Christians to be treated so well. But now, I mean, you see it on the media. You see it in the world around you. We're like at the start. We're at the cusp of persecution. You just turn CNN on for a minute. You even, I'm not going to say that, never mind. <laughs> you just turn the news on for a moment, and you start to see we are just on the edge of real deep persecution. I believe it's coming. I'm sorry. The peace we've, we've, under, we've been in for so long, I think it's coming to an end. Why? Why will we be persecuted? Why has the church, why has the Christian church been persecuted for over 2,000 years? No matter what country it's been in, no matter what context it's been in, no matter what, they find a way to persecute us. Why? It says right here in the text. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. And what does it mean by doing right? It means following a system of morality that is higher than your own self-interest. It means being, a, being submitted to God who made us, saying, I am the creator, I am the creation, you are the creator, I'm going to do what you want, God. You have given me rules, you have given me guidelines, you have given me a way of life. And I am choosing to follow you instead of choosing to follow my own self-interests, what I believe to be right and true. I submit that to God. And whatever God says, that must be right and true. Because he made us. He formed us from the clay 
out of the miry clay. You're mud people. Mud people. He made you. And he has the right to determine what is right and wrong. Absolutely 100%. And the world hates that. The world hates being told what is right. The world hates being told especially what is wrong, whether your lifestyle is wrong, whether, you know, everything. They want to be able to decide their own morality for themselves. And that's what separates us from them. And so that's what's going to bring persecution. Because Christians were always called to rise above the crowd. Christians were always called to be an example of God, of who God is, of what God has told us. And so if we're doing our job, if we are doing what God has told us to do, the world's going to hate us. And the fact that it hasn't hated us for so long makes me wonder if we're doing our jobs. Now, I just want to clarify here because we've been talking over the past few weeks about, you know, Jesus says a lot of things in these Beatitudes. Is he telling, is he just making a, a, a descriptive statement? Is he just saying, if you are poor, God is going to bless you. He's not necessarily calling everyone to be poor. The same thing, God blesses those who mourn. He's not necessarily calling everybody to be a mourner. But there are certain of these Beatitudes where he's absolutely telling you, you need to do this. You need to make peace with others. You need to have mercy on others. You need to seek justice. In this passage, God is not telling you to seek persecution. God is not telling you to get on a street corner and, you know, put a sign around your neck and say, whips and chains, please, just beat, beat the tar out of me. The Lord's not calling you to do that. However, Jesus is calling you to do what is right, despite the threat of persecution. Jesus is calling you to do what is right, what God has told you to do, following his word, to continue in a pattern of living, only thinking about what he, was, what he would think of you, not thinking about what the world would think of you, to do that in spite of, of the threat of persecution and the reality of persecution. Uh, for example, just think back to my, our James Bond example. James Bond does not go out into the fray like looking to get shot at, okay? He doesn't go into the fray like, he's, he's getting pursued all the time, right? <laughs> like people, like you can't go through that movie. That, that movie's like three hours long and it's like an hour and a half of action shots. Like he's always doing something. The guy's got great cardio. He doesn't do that. He doesn't go out into the field to catch bullets, okay? James Bond goes out into the field to bring peace to the world, to do what is right. And then in the process of doing what is right, the world attacks him because <laughs> the world doesn't want him to do it. The terrorist organizations don't want him to do it. Gangsters don't want him to do it. It's the same for us. We're not called to go out and catch bullets, but we might have to take one for doing what's right. Follow God's commandments. Seek justice. Love mercy. And stand up for godly morals. Just to clarify, that does not mean go be a jerk on Facebook. Because remember, think back to my last point, being a peacemaker we're called to end conflict, <laughs> to address conflict, address it, and bring peace. Your comments on Facebook or your comments to other people are to incite anger, to incite people that you're not a peacemaker, and you're not doing what's right. And when you are persecuted, verse 12 says, be happy about it. What's that about? Be glad because a great reward awaits you in heaven. Now, I don't know what the reward is going to be, but I know that when my Lord, my Savior said, it is going to be not just a reward, but a great reward, it's going to be something big, guys. 
he is going to bless you tremendously above and beyond. I mean, I don't know if this reward is just talking about heaven, but I think it's something more. I think he's going to, you're going to have a better mansion in heaven or something. I don't know. I don't know. Another crown you can lay at Jesus's feet. There's going to be some great reward for you. And really think about it. When we get to heaven and we stand before our king, Will he look down and say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant? That's a great reward. I think that, I think that if we follow him, if we prioritize Jesus, we prioritize doing his will, doing right, we're going to get that well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's what I've been, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm standing up here for. Because I want that. I want to serve my God well even at the sacrifice of myself and what I want. Many of you are afraid of doing what is right. Many of you are afraid of standing up for what God has told you to stand up for, afraid of making waves with other people because of what people will think because of how the world will treat you. The world calls us bigots. The world calls us intolerant because we stand by a morality that is higher than our own. But you need to stand firm for God's righteousness. You need to stand firm for God's righteousness. Don't be afraid. Don't cower in fear because of the world. The world is powerless. The world is powerless against the God who has created the heavens and the earth. He could end them in a moment. The only reason he chooses not to is so that more people could be saved, so that more people could be brought to a place of reconciliation with him. God is greater than our circumstances, and he loves you. He loves you so much. So, when you pursue righteousness, when you pursue peace, you are acting as an agent of God. Go out and be an agent. It just sounds cool to be an agent. I want to be a secret agent like James Bond. You get to be an agent for the Lord. You get to be a person who is strategically placed in your life because every single one of you has a circumstance, has a job, has a friend group, has a family that you have been placed in with difficult people. <laughs> and you have been called to bring heaven to earth, to bring God's will, to bring doing what is right, to bring peace to your circumstances. And I encourage you to go out and do that. Explode from this place. Don't leave it in here. Make change to the world. Enact change in the world to make this world a better place. You all have the power. You all have the ability. You have the equipping of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. Bring the kingdom. Now let me pray for you. Jesus, you see all these people. You see these circumstances. And yeah, I'm just going to ask you if, you, if you, would you raise your hand if you want to be a peacemaker? Raise your hand if you want to be someone who pursues peace, who chases after peace, who doesn't just sweep problems under the rug. Good, that's about all of you. And raise your hand if you want to do what's right despite the fear of persecution. Amen. Agents of God, there you are. Jesus, you see all these hands. You see all these people and they want to work for you. They want to be sent out into the world to make peace to do what is right despite the threat and the reality of persecution. And Jesus, I pray you would help them. I pray that you would guide them. I pray that you would give them courage because in this day and age, they need all the courage that they can get. Embolden them, Lord. 
Give them new spiritual gifts to bring about your will in this world, to bring heaven, to make heaven come crashing down to earth and make this a better world for all of us. Empower them, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And earlier in this message, I talked about how Jesus, how God, in, in the name of peace, as a peacemaker, sent Jesus into this world to address your sin problem, to destroy it, to take it upon himself, so that you could once again have peace with God. How many of you want to be a Christian today? How many of you, whether you're in the room or online, you would say, I want to follow a God who is willing to take the first step in peace because he loves me, because he adores me. If you want to become a Christian, if you want to follow Jesus today, would you just raise your hand? Yeah, I saw those hands. All right, every eye, every eye closed, every head bowed. Now, if you want to become a Christian, would you just follow me in this prayer? And everyone around you, they're going to say this prayer too. So everyone just repeat after me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive my sins. I turn away from them. And I turn instead to you. I want you to be my Savior. Save me. Pay for my sins. And lead me on the path of righteousness. I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, you are a member of the great family of God. You are covered by the blood of the Jesus. And that is a great thing. And I'm so happy that you did. And if you did make that decision to follow Jesus today, would you just let us know? Would you text faith in Jesus to the phone number 97000? Just to let us know, because if you, if you put your faith in Jesus, you are not called to walk this road alone. That is what we are here for. We are here for you, and we want to walk beside you in that. All right. God bless you guys. Wow. Pastor Christian, that was an amazing message. It, uh, you took uh, some passages of Scripture that really were, were very challenging and brought such meaning out. Wow. Peace is conflict addressed. I was going to chew on that for a while. And I love what you said there at the end. God is calling you to do what is right despite the threat of persecution. Wow. There's some stuff for us to chew on and be encouraged on and frankly be prepared for. Man, what a great, great message. Thank you so much. Well, it's, I told you God was up to something tonight. I really believe that he, he was and he is. He's opened up his word to us, and he's preparing us for what's to come. Wow, this is amazing. It's so good that we were together tonight. If, you have, you have, if you've not yet connected with us, would you just take that first step, just, just a quick text, new to NFC, to the phone number 97000, just so we can begin to walk together. We need each other more now and in the years to come than ever before. I really believe that. If you're watching online, would you just like or subscribe? Uh, and that not only helps you be reminded of our content, but it helps others find the message of Jesus that we're sharing. And so just that simple thing really helps others. If you would do that, I'd sure appreciate it. Next Sunday morning, we'll be together at the new property live and online. The live stream will be at 1030. And we've been working so hard to get ready, but this week is now crunch week. And if any of you uh, could help me tomorrow, tomorrow is the first real big moving day. Uh, so if you're able to lift heavy things or medium weight things, <laughs> 
and you could help me, would you let me know? And then throughout this week, we'll be going down. We don't really have a bunch of scheduled times. I just know starting tomorrow, we just got to get her done. We need to get uh, all the chairs down there, all that kind of stuff, sound equipment, on and on it goes. So if you could help, would you just let me know? That would be so helpful. If you're, if you're online but local and could help, you could, uh, you could text us through the website, uh, email us rather through the website. Or on signups, on signups. If you go to the app uh, or, on the, or our website, click signups uh, at serve. Yeah, awesome. And then that'll let us know you're interested. All right? Man, wow, I just, I don't even want to go. I'm just honest. I don't even want to go. It's been so good. I feel so full and so challenged and encouraged. And I hope you do too. Man, so good. Looking forward. Let's do it again in a week, okay? God bless you. Have a great week.